Hey everyone, my name is Leanna and I'm a professional costume pattern maker and today's video is all about how to use the pen and flat tool in Clo and we will be making Tinkerbell's costume as a demo. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So again, just to recap, my name is Leanna and I'm a professional costume pattern maker. I used to work for Disney and now I have my own business where I have one, my own business, and two, I teach y'all how to make your own costume patterns. So today's video, again, is all about the pen tool and the flat tool in the software called Clo. This tool is essentially the same thing as taking your tape to a dress form. So you're really drawing out the design that you want and then you're laying your fabric over and you're lifting the patterns off of the dress form. So that's literally essentially all we're gonna do, but in 3D. One of the benefits of doing it in Clo is that it comes with so many sizes, both male, female, children, even blocks for like handbags and shoes or literally whatever you wanna do, you could do. You can also customize an avatar to be your own size. I just put out a video that has everything that Clo comes with, so that's a quick little reference. But I'll also have a video coming out soon that is how to make your own avatar so that way you can make your own stuff for yourself all the time. So let's go ahead and go over to Clo and get going. So this is again what Clo looks like. We've got our 2D window and our 3D window. I'm gonna go ahead and open up an avatar and again the way that I will work is I will just be going through the motions and hopefully I'll pick up the tips and tricks as we work together. If you have any questions just feel free to leave it down below. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on Yuna to load her in. And since she comes in as a standard size avatar, I'm gonna go ahead and size her to like a size eight or 10. Um, let's go for size. And again, a reminder, you have to, if you open up a female avatar, you have to open up the female sizing. And But they're all in their own organized folders, so it's not something you really have to think about. Let's go Missy Curvy because Tinkerbell has some curves. And I'll load in a size eight. All right. That looks good already. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop in a square so I can add the image to this area. Um, it's just something that I like to do. You don't have to do it. So if we press and hold this shape tool, it's polygon, rectangle, ellipse, and spiral. We're gonna go ahead and make an, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make a rectangle. Um, this looks pretty good. All right, then we will go to our regular transform pattern tool, which this is just gonna allow me to select anything that I want. We will right click this piece, deactivate it, and then we will hide it from our area. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop my picture of Tinkerbell. We'll drop it in as a texture. And then we can go to our edit texture tool, which is right here, edit texture. We'll click it, and then we'll use this little thing over here to make it bigger. And then you can move her around just so we can have a reference on the screen. I usually end up working like off my screen, like on an iPad or something. So I'm referencing something to the side of me, but just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna add it in here. Okay, so we have our little picture, very vague, very blurry. I did not go all out and finding the best picture I could. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is add a new fabric since this fabric is now occupied with the texture that is Tinkerbell. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. And so we have our new fabric. Let's go ahead and make it shiny just for fun we'll definitely make it green that's a good green and then we'll scroll down to the bottom where it's the physical property which this is what where the fabric comes to play and clothes fabrics are really pretty good um, but what I usually like to end up working in is like what I tend to work in which is gonna be like a muslin for my sample you know so we'll just go ahead and go with the muslin so what we're gonna do is use the pen tool, which over here in the 3D window, you will see this dress form and like the line, which kind of is very symbolic again of just drawing on a dress form. So if you click this top button, which is gonna be edit 3D pen, this is what you're gonna use when you're gonna be moving things around. But otherwise you'll be using the actual tool, which is the 3D pen avatar. And then if you see this little arrow at the bottom, which a bunch of tools have that, that means there's more tools in this little square. So if you press and hold it, you'll see the flatten tool and the 3D pen tool. So flatten, and if you click that, you'll see it change, is what is then the process of lifting the piece, the shape that you've made. So let's go ahead and go back into the pen tool. And so now we have a pen, and then you'll see a dot on her body, which this is like the marking. So if you click, you'll see a line and you can start drawing. If you just click, it's gonna create a solid hard point. And if you hold the control key or the command key on a Mac, which is what I use, um, you'll get a red point and it'll be a curved point so that way it's nice and smooth. Um, one of the things that I love is if you click the backspace button or the delete button, it deletes one point at a time. So if you make any mistakes, you're good to go. For Clo, 
if you press and hold alt um, or on a Mac option, so if you hold that on your keyboard and then you click and hold, you can move her around the area. And if you hold right click and while not clicking nothing on the keyboard, you can rotate her. So those come in handy a lot. Your hand kind of stays always on the, on the keyboard as you're working. And then if you scroll with your finger, that's gonna be your zoom in, zoom out. So I usually zoom in and then I'll press alt and then I'll click to drag her down to really get a good view of what I'm working with. Usually when I'm also doing the flat tool, I'm only gonna do one side of the bodice unless it's asymm like unless it's asymmetrical. Asymmetrical? Will I then do the whole body, but otherwise we just need one side. One of the things when you're making costumes is most times characters don't come with like actual seams on their body. So it's pretty much it's pretty much up to you to add the seams where you think they should go, like a side seam, a shoulder seam fit seams because most times they're not going to have it so that's up to creative like you can do it how you like honestly you can add more design seams you can really make her real paneled if you want to as long as you're able to get in and out of the outfit that's all that matters okay so let's kind of look at what she looks like so she has a sweetheart over here with the low back let's go ahead and make it into a corset top so that way it ends like in this area and then the skirt is going to be its own thing and then we can add some like nice shaping side seams maybe a few princess seams to really emphasize like a nice corset look okay so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to start at center front and I'm gonna hold down the command key to get these really pretty curved shapes, the curve points. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am still holding down the key on the keyboard, the command key, and I'm gonna use the right click to rotate her so I can really see the side and focus on this really deep low back that I wanna try to get. Oh yeah, that's really low. And then we'll come around to her back and then we will double click to end the line. And then let's go ahead and go to her front and then if you press and hold shift, it will give you the straight lines, which Clo pretty much works like any other software. So if you've used any software, they all pretty much have the same tools, like when it comes to like copy and paste, um, shift to stay straight. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and put, I feel like right below the belly button sounds good, looks good. And then let's go ahead and make this a nice curve up right above her hip. Okay. And then also a tip is you have to kind of use, like add as many curve points that are necessary to get around any of these curves. Oh, let's do a double click. And let's connect these two so that we have our center back. Um, like example being if we had just um, tried to do one point here and go all the way to the back, it probably wouldn't show up, but it also wouldn't let you click anyway. So you still have to backtrack and put a point where is necessary to be able to get a clean pattern off of it. Okay, so now we have this bodice. Let's go ahead and start with the side seam. And this one is so small, we can just make it a straight seam. And then let's add some pretty seams down center front. So maybe Let's try to keep them relatively straight. So I'm gonna use the curve tool and then just eyeball where this seam is going. Double click um, here. And then let's maybe add like a curved seam just for fun. All right, so I think that'll look really pretty. Um, this back seam is probably fine just like that, but let's go ahead and just add one more. Okay. So once you have all of your seams as you'd like them, to, it can, and this is gonna be a really fit look, like it's gonna curve to the body. Um, we can go ahead and open our flatten tool, which press and hold the pencil, move to flatten. And you'll see how it says select all areas to be flattened and then press enter. That's what we're gonna focus on. So when you go to highlight, if you see that it's not turning blue and you can't find like the perfect point to lift, it's because you need another seam line to be able to create that pattern. Like if you were doing something on the shoulder, it's probably gonna want you to add a seam or something. Or say if we didn't add a side seam, it'd probably be like, whoa, like that's not possible. Um, very much like as it would, it wouldn't happen in real life, but you'd know like in real life, like you can't just, you'll see, you'll have a lot of wrinkles going on. You'll have to figure out how to rotate stuff or it just won't work and you literally have to add another seam. Um, it will let you know when something's not liftable. So let's go ahead and click through all these. You kind of have to move around to find it. So if it turns blue, you're good to go. Let's rotate. And now that they're all highlighted, we can press enter. And 
there we go. We have our first half of the pattern. Then we can go into our 2D window and really organize these. So let's move all of these out of the way. That's probably the back. And we have this here and this here. Um, as you can see here, I added a point. So we can also add a notch here. Um, so the next thing that I'm gonna wanna do is clean up some of these curve points. Um, if we just highlight them and delete them, we can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and make the center front a straight line. Perfect, alrighty, that is fine. So we'll go into our regular tool. We are going to highlight them. And then let's scroll down in our property editor. And right now the particle distance is 20, which what particle distance is, is if you go over here in your fabric view, you could see your mesh. And so this is how, you see how in the 3D render, you see like these sharp, you could see like these sharp edges. That's what this is showing you. So if we lower that to six, six is usually what I just lower it to. It'll just help smooth that out a bit. So let's put our fabric back onto, I like to use this one because it's a little bit see-through. And then we will right click, we will clone pattern with linked editing. And what that's gonna do is literally clone the pattern and whatever I do to this side will happen to this side because they're gonna be linked together. That's what this blue is representing. So anything I do with this one, see how there's that line, it's connecting it to that one. All right. And then let's go ahead and make sure our center front and center back is sewn together. And then what I usually like to do is I'll highlight everything, come to the 3D window, right click and strengthen. It will turn orange and that will just add strength to your patterns so that way you can really get a good shape of them. So press the space bar. All right. So that is looking really vivacious. Like the shape around her chest is insane. Very deep back. And so now what we're able to do is highlight all of our pieces, unstrengthen them, and this is our bodice. You can always adjust as you want to, like really play with the shape, like down here, if like how there's a little point here. We can work in our 2D window to really get rid of that, whether that be to like lift this a little bit, maybe even let's get rid of this point and then drop this a little bit to make this a right angle so that way that's nice and smooth. All right, so then just literally just like that, we now have our full bodice pattern. So the next thing that you would do is go over to your 2D window and click the seam allowance tool. You'll highlight all of it, usually twice, wait till they all turn yellow. And right over here, the width, I work with a quarter of an inch when I'm sewing, so I'll put it all at 0.25. If I wanted to print these patterns, what I would do is I would create a rectangle and I will just click over here and I will do 24 by 35 because I have a large format printer and I just take off the inch for margins. We'll go ahead and add a new fabric so that way it adds in a white fabric and we'll just download it because if I don't change the fabric to white, it will print the patterns in green and I don't need that. So we can control C, control V to copy paste these patterns. Let's get them all organized over here, highlight all of them. And then the next thing I would do is remove, move this all to the side. Definitely we would file, save our project, but otherwise we can click all of this. We'll delete it and we will go file, export Adobe PDF. And it's literally gonna do just that. It's gonna export it into a PDF. We'll click save. We'll leave the internal lines, the pattern outlines and the seam allowance. That's all we need. And now I have these patterns I can just print here at home. All right, so we're all done here. I made her a little skirt just with some large petals and a waistband. Um, bodice is completely done, so I hope y'all found this very helpful, really like a crash course on the pen and flat tool. It's so helpful and useful, especially for those fitted things like Spider-Man suits, bodices, unitards, like anything like that that you can think of. This tool is so important for that. And if you wanna see any specific costume made, just leave a comment down below and I can do that. Um, this Clo file will also live in my Patreon as a download. So if you have Clo, you can always download this and modify it to yourself print it out and make it if you feel like it or you can also just download it and see exactly like the moves that i've made like see what the patterns look like on your own computer so that will live on patreon i also have a bunch of behind the scenes and tips and tricks that are be that that are always posted there if you have any other questions or anything just be sure to leave it down in the comments otherwise guys thank y'all so much for watching and i will see y'all in the next one bye